શ્રી સ્વામિનારાયણ ભગવાનની જય અક્ષર પુરુષોત્તમ મહારાજની જય પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજની જય મહંત સ્વામી મહારાજની જય ટુડે એઝ વી બિગિન સેક્શન આઈ ઓફ ધ જીવન ચરિત્ર વી વિલ બી કવરિંગ પેજીસ ફોર હંડ્રેડ ટુ ફોર હંડ્રેડ એન્ડ ફોર્ટી નાઇન ફોર ધ હોલ સેક્શન સો વીલ સ્ટાર્ટ ઓફ વિથ ધ ફર્સ્ટ પાર્ટ ઓફ ઇટ વિચ ઇઝ when pramukh sai maharaj was traveling and doing vichran in the village of salad now the year is 1967 and as we left off in the previous session which pramukh sai maharaj was doing extensive vichran as a lead up to the amrut mahotsav yogi ji maharaj's amrut mahotsav celebrations promoting the amrut mahotsav he had just traveled in the charotar region and had visited about 30 villages in about 20 days and now he was traveling in the kanam wakad region and swami eventually made his way to the village of salad which is on on the 13th of january 1967 now there was a hari bhakt by the name of mani bhai nanalal bhat and him along with the, some of the local hari bhaktos they used to live in salad when they found out that pramukh sai maharaj was coming he arranged a grand procession to welcome pramukh sai maharaj and as swami shri was in his 46th year he was 46 years old 45 years old but it was the 46th year you know they arranged the the procession in such a way that swami was made to sit on a on a chariot which was drawn by 46 oxen there were also about 50 learned scholars that had walked ahead of swami shri's uh, cart and they were all chanting holy verses from the ved and again greeting swami shri with flowers gulal rice Uh, that there were decorated horses the horse riders the home guard there was even a bhajan mandri even they had riflemen you know who were part- participated in the processions it was a very grand welcome for pramukh swami maharaj now remember the pramukh swami maharaj was uh, was only 45 years old at that time and the procession continued for about 2 uh, and a half hours and about 1500 people had attended the procession and it's interesting how you know people of the hari bhaktos had actually revered pramukh sai maharaj so much it's almost felt like as if yogi ji maharaj himself had visited and so in you know, the the sentiments were very very strong at that time so this was something very unique a unique celebration mani bhai was also a very close friend of uh, pramukh sai maharaj from then pramukh sai maharaj left uh, the village of salad and he carried on his vicharan and in about merely 50 days now the, this is during the time of january february in about 50 days pramukh sai maharaj visited almost 60 villages and towns and you could see that this was the utsah the excitement that he had to celebrate yogi ji maharaj's uh, amrut mahotsav so this is the first chapter as we move on to the second part now after pramukh sai maharaj is vichran and travels in the kanam region eventually swami shri then uh, continued his vichran in the charotha region and eventually came to badalpur now while swami was in badalpur Swami was just busy reading letters and replying in in sitting in the mandir one day and a hari bhakt by the name of uh, Chhatrasi he actually came into the mandir and he requested uh, one of the senior devotees over there who was managing Swami Shri schedule and he asked that you know that I want to take Swami Shri to my farm for a padramani can you please make some arrangements now the response from that uh, senior hari bhakt was he was very frustrated already and he spoke out pretty uh, annoyingly and he said look being a teacher don't you have any shame in demanding such things you know you're asking to take such a holy son such a senior son to a farm you know when padramis we're just barely managing padramis in the villages and we can just barely manage all that how can he visit a farm and he says nahi aa bhai he won't come go so he just dismissed it was very dismissive in the way he he said it now obviously these were very harsh it was a very harsh denial and so chatrasi was very very embarrassed and he stood up he was actually also very upset and so he stood up and he was about to walk out pramukh sai maharaj was sitting there in a distance and he saw chatrasi so he quickly called him by pramukh sai maharaj had already overheard the conversation between chatrasi and this uh, this devotee and so swami asked so uh, thai what happened and chatrasi then just replied swami kaini nothing and pramukh sai maharaj had already heard it so he says look i heard the conversation just go to the farm i'll be there i'm going to come so pramukh sai maharaj was you know he was a people's guru full of compassion 
he wasn't like a machine you know very swami's heart was very very big and even amidst you know his own difficulties and the busy schedule that he had he wouldn't he wouldn't allow any hari bhaktos to feel compromised in this kind of a way so even amidst about 80 to 90 padramnis swami eventually decided that yes we'll go into the padramnis so swami she then made his way to chatrasi's farm and he took some hari bhaktos with him chatrasi was so excited and so when he went there you know swami he spread a very nice simple cloth for swami shri to sit on the, in his in his clay mat so normally they would have clay huts on the farm this is not where they live but the the huts the farms would have small huts as well so swami would actually visit this hut swami shri sat on the floor on in the hut he performed aarti did pujan and chatrasi was so excited he actually made an offering of about 25 rupees and 76 paisa to thakur ji all for the amrut mahotsav for yogi ji maharaj but whatever started off as one padramni at chatrasi's farm eventually led to a succession of other padramnis and this was a a normal thing for pramukh sai maharaj one padramni would lead to another to lead lead to another it started at 9 am in the morning and carried on till 4 pm everything unscheduled the padramni started in badalpur and ended up all the way in the outskirts of dwaran so you can imagine it was almost about 10 kilometers off course <laughs> from where they actually started the first padramni at chatrasi's house so imagine all day swami is walking 10 kilometers just doing padramnis from one house to another house to another house and so swami she is you can see that this was the extent that swami was doing his vicharan just to please the hari bhaktos and to uh, to inform everybody about yogi ji maharaj's amrut mahotsav swami she's vicharan then continued from badalpur and in merely about 3 months he had covered almost 100 villages and towns just over a village a day but swami was you can see the excitement that swami had to celebrate his guru's uh, amrut mahotsav the jayanti and you know what when you're actually having fun you almost become immune to the hardships of travel and the cold weather and so pramukh sai maharaj was actually enjoying what he was doing and this is exactly what happened to swami shri eventually swami shri got to atladra for vasant panchmi to celebrate uh, shastri ji maharaj's birth anniversary let's move on to section 3 So while Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Atladra Raman Bai a hari bhakt from Sokhra the village of Sokhra invited Yogi ji Maharaj for the inauguration of his new enterprise and Yogi ji Maharaj then suggested that he should take Pramukh Sai Maharaj in his place to perform the inauguration and Yogi ji Maharaj then said to Raman Bai ke apre to Shastri ji Maharaj e mandiro karya che tema manvu ane Pramukh Sai Maharaj ni agna ma rehu તેઓ શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજ અને સંસ્થાના વારસદાર છે સો સમ વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ વર્ડ્સ શેર્ડ બાય યોગીજી મહારાજ કે તેઓ શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજ અને સંસ્થાના વારસદાર છે ટાઈમ એન્ડ અગેન યુ કેન સી ધેટ યોગીજી મહારાજ વુડ ઓફન ક્લેરિફાય ધેટ પ્રમુખ સાઈ મહારાજ અલોન વોઝ હિઝ સોલ એર લેટ્સ મૂવ ઓન ટુ આઈ ફોર નાઉ નાઉ અરાઉન્ડ ધીસ ટાઈમ દે વોઝ એ એ વેલ વિશર ઓફ ધ સંસ્થા હુ હેડ બીન imprisoned in varodara due to some misunderstanding or some grim misunderstanding that had taken place and yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj visited the jail to meet this person and seeing the sadhus visit him in prison really brought tears to his eyes he was so moved by the gesture that pramukh sai maharaj and yogi ji maharaj had and so this was uh, something that we would see that pramukh sai maharaj and yogi ji maharaj you know no matter who it was but to any crying soul they would actually reach out to these people to try and console them and help them in any any paristhiti any situation that they had now that evening yogi ji maharaj pramukh sai maharaj and some of the others they made their way to goriad for a parayan now the parayan in in goriad was on the hari lila kalpatur pramukh sai maharaj himself was going to do the parayan it was a katha for about 7 days on the 7th skand of the hari lila kalpatur you know santosh from mumbai had also um, been invited to speak in the parayan Now unfortunately what happened on that day that same evening the day before the parayan they received news the second floor terrace of the gondal gurukur dining hall which was under construction had actually collapsed and so it was an emergency and so pramukh sai maharaj had to immediately rush overnight to the scene of the tragedy at that time and as soon as he got to gondal early the following morning he went straight to the gurukur to inspect what had actually happened obviously fortunately no one was injured or hurt but then eventually swami shri ended up staying there he stayed in gondal for about 3 days and he gave a lot of guidance on what to do next 
obviously the people who were managing the construction were very shaken by the incident actually they were even scared okay you know because of us because of some sort of mismanagement or whatever reason it was they were trying to take the blame on themselves nevertheless pramukh sai maharaj you know very magnanimous in the way he approached the situation he didn't even utter a word of criticism instead he actually consoled all of them ke look out to thatu say don't worry he mildly very calmly advised everybody and then also told them to take care in the future that such things don't happen again just to make sure so we can see the way swami actually managed the whole situation it was a disaster uh something unexpected yet pramukh sai maharaj was very um very magnanimous that's the right word in the way he actually managed uh, the whole situation let's move on to i5 so once swami had finished his uh, time in gondal the meeting in gondal eventually swami then returned to goriad now there was a hari bhakt by the name of shankar lal from a village called simalia now he was also there and to participate in the uh, in the parayan very very enthusiastic hari bhakt however he had a few health issues as well and his accommodation had been arranged at the local village dharmashala now taking his health into consideration the arrangements for the accommodation were not very suitable but then you know he thought to himself that it's very inappropriate to actually ask you know in, in such a big event when there are so many hari bhaktas there it's not appropriate to actually ask to make special arrangements especially when there's a parayan like this so he just uh, accepted whatever was there what was whatever was available you know very nice gesture from a hari bhakt like this as well however once you know during his stay during the parayan it just so happened that he got a chance to meet pramukh sai maharaj and so pramukh sai maharaj saw him and called him over and swami ji asked him about his well being and then he asked him about his accommodation which is so particular about pramukh sai maharaj pellam pello swami prashna put se ke jamya utaro thai gyo and tabiyat sari chane so these kind of questions were very common and pramukh sai maharaj again reaching out to this hari bhakt asked him about his accommodation and so swami asked kya che utaro where are you staying and the hari bhakt said swami i'm staying in the dharmashala and immediately from i mean he he said it in a very casual tone but immediately pramukh sai maharaj caught on to this <coughs> and swami recognized and swami says ke tumhari tabiyat to sari nahi you know your health isn't too well you know is it very are you finding it convenient over there tumhara mata is a, is it all okay for you and swami knew that it wasn't obviously convenient for the hari bhakt to stay over there so amidst all these multitude of tasks immediately pramukh sai maharaj arranged for a suitable lodging for shankar lal shankar lal was very much relieved you know with this uh, but he was also very very surprised that swami shri actually remembered about his illness even though it had been such a long time since they had last met now again very a very particular trait about pramukh sai maharaj ek vakat madya hoy kai khabar hoy to varsho pachhi pan many years later but still swami would still remember this and swami took note of the fact that he wasn't too well so again a very nice gesture from pramukh sai maharaj as we mentioned earlier on that pramukh sai maharaj was a people's guru you know looking after the welfare of santos and hari bhaktos was almost um, second nature uh, to swami shri so this was again a very nice incident from this section let's move on to i6 now now after this parayan in goriad pramukh sai maharaj conducted another 50 padramnis in the village you can imagine amidst the parayan he still has to do the parayan and still carry on doing with the padramnis so 50 other padramnis in the village swami shri then went to atladra and eventually yogi ji maharaj went to chansad now chansad is obviously pramukh sai maharaj's birthplace so pramukh sai maharaj went to atladra and yogi ji maharaj traveled to chansad yogi ji maharaj was so excited and full of joy when he got to chansad there was a musical band ready to welcome yogi ji maharaj but uh, as soon as yogi ji maharaj arrived in chansad he got there earlier before the band was there and so the hari bhakt was then <laughs> requested yogi baba to stay Uh, remain seated in the car until the band would come they wanted to welcome bapa with a band but then yogi ji maharaj then you know yogi ji maharaj then responded and saying that look motor karta niche saro you know it's, it's better to be on this on the ground over here than to sit in the car and then he gave the reason ke prasadini raj kya thi you know where can we find such sacred soil now sacred soil meaning that this is pramukh sai maharaj's birthplace and so again yogi ji maharaj is hinting to the mahima of pramukh sai maharaj ki avi prasadini raj kya thi and then swami goes on to say ke narayan swami itle ke pramukh swami nu janma sthan che itle mahima gano che jitli var ubha rahiye etlo labh che see so nice ke jitli var aa zameen ma ubha rahiye etlo labh che pramukh swami mote ra che apne e kahe tem karvu agna padvi tuk tuk thai javu 
શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજની આજ્ઞા પાડીએ એમ પાડવી રાજી કરી લેવા મોટા પુરુષને રાજી કરી લીધે મોટા પુરુષને રાજી કરી લીધા હોય એ જીવનું ભાથું છે સો અગેન ઇઝ ટોકિંગ અબાઉટ લોર ઓફ મહિમા અબાઉટ પ્રમુખ સાહેબ મહારાજ અગેન ધીસ વોઝ વાય યોગીજી વાય પ્રમુખ સાહેબ મહારાજ નટલાદ્રા યોગીજી મહારાજ સર ઓલ દિસ વાઇલ હી વોઝ ઇન ચાણસદ એન્ડ ધેન ફ્રોમ દેર યોગીજી મહારાજ ઇવેન્ચ્યુઅલી લેફ્ટ ફોર રાજકોટ ઇવન પ્રમુખ સાહેબ મહારાજ ઇન મેડ હિઝ વે ટુ રાજકોટ નાઉ ઇન રાજકોટ દેવર ગોઈન ટુ ધ મૂર્તિ પ્રતિષ્ઠા ફેસ્ટિવલ ઓવર દેર નાઉ વેરી સ્પેશિયસ હાઉસ હેડ બીન લોકેટેડ ઇન રાજપૂતપુરા ઇન રાજકોટ and the building had been renovated into beautiful mandir so the murti pratishta ceremony was performed by yogi ji maharaj on the 14th of march 1967 and after the pratishta swami shri then stayed in gondal for about 2 weeks again again to help for the preparations to oversee the preparations of the over, of the upcoming amrut mahotsav then swami shri celebrated the festival of uh, fuldol in sarangpur and then he made his way to ningada Ningala is another village which is very close by to Sarangpur. Let's move on to I-7. Now while Swami Shri was in Ningala, the residents, the Hari Bhaktas of Ningala were so thrilled and excited to welcome both Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Swami to their village. They had a very special relationship with Pramukh Swami Maharaj because Swami Shri had often visited this village you know, during his frequent trips between Gadada and Sarangpur. While he was a Kothari of Sarangpur Mandir, he would often visit Ningala. So they had a very strong bond. and so it was a very special bond between the hari bhaktos and pramukh sai maharaj and naturally they wanted pramukh sai maharaj to be present during the murti pratishta so they had obviously initially requested pramukh sai maharaj and yogi ji maharaj ke pramukh sai maharaj amari pratishta ma hajar hoy to saro however very unexpectedly yogi ji maharaj received a letter from gondal just during that time requesting to send pramukh sai maharaj immediately to gondal now some important decisions in gondal were required and it was a very urgent um, meeting that needed to take place now remember pramukh sai maharaj especially come to ningada for pratishta but as soon as yogi ji maharaj received the request and yogi baba told pramukh sai maharaj ke tumhare gondal jao par se you will have to go to gondal and without a, without a second thought pramukh sai maharaj got ready to leave for gondal when the hari bhaktos found out that swami shi was about to leave they pleaded to him ke swami please stay back obviously swami had to weigh out the sentiments and the responsibility between the two of them eventually he explained to the hari bhaktos ke look as a result of your affection you know your invitation you know i i had a chance to participate in the yagna i also had a chance to participate in the procession and the sabha and now obviously it's yogi baba's agna and there is some important work so i'll have to leave everyone rushed to yogi baba because they knew that if yogi baba gave agna then pramukh sami maharaj would never be able to disregard yogi baba's agna so they requested yogi baba to take to ask pramukh sami maharaj to stay back yogi ji maharaj then explained to everybody the reasoning and he explained that look it's necessary to send pramukh sami maharaj back to gondal because there's some emergency that has come up now pramukh sami maharaj immediately left for gondal but one thing that is very interesting to note is that he didn't send the hari bhaktos to yogi baba to oblige him or to make him feel very awkward you know and he did exactly what yogi baba uh, instructed him so eventually pramukh sai maharaj then left uh, to go to gondal and the pratishta took place in ningada but although pramukh sai maharaj was not present during the pratishta ceremony in ningada you know it's uh, it's good enough to say that he was certainly present in the minds and the hearts of all the hari bhaktas who were there let's move on to i8 now this prasang that we're going to know, talk about now is it's it's a very well known prasang and it's a prasang about the decision on where um where to host yogi ji maharaj's amrut mahotsav the decision was to where to host this uh, mahotsav now a meeting was to be held in gondal to decide the venue to celebrate yogi baba's amrut mahotsav yogi ji maharaj's wish naturally was to celebrate it in in gondal i mean obviously yogi baba didn't want any celebrations for himself but if there was going to be an event it would have to be gondal but obviously he was very hesitant in presenting this in front of all the senior sadhus and the devotees and as a result during the discussions pramukh sai maharaj knew what yogi baba's inner wish was and so he very during the meeting he very firmly but very respectfully said to everyone ke look we should celebrate the amrut mahotsav right here in gondal because this is yogi baba's favorite place it's natural and as soon as swami shi mentioned this mota swami very angrily remarked you know where are you going to get the water from atlu unado che it's summer time where are you going to get water from and pramukh sai maharaj said bapa che pramukh sai you know he said the bapa is here 
he'll, we'll figure out a way to get the water. And Mota Swami then became even more agitated and then he roared in, front, in the meeting. He says, is Bapa that free? Bapa knows that the water is free? Pramukh Sai Maharaj said, look, if needed, I will bring the water from Bhadir Dam, you know, which is nearby. Not nearby, but it's near Jetpur. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj was actually shouldering all the angry assaults <laughs> that were, uh, sh you know, thrown at him on behalf of Yogi Bapa at that time. Mota Swami was getting more and more aggravated at this time. And he says, do you understand anything? Do you even know where Bhadir Dam is? It was like 10 kilometers away. Now, the discussion continued for a while. The underlying reason was very simple. Mota Swami wanted the festival to be celebrated in Atladra. That's why he was creating such a huge uh, fuss about it. And Magan Kaka, the, the secretary of the Sansta, he wanted the celebrations to be held in Bochasan. So that's why the tussle was there. But eventually, you know, Swami Shri wanted to fulfill Yogi Bapa's wish and they eventually finalized Gondal as the final venue. And when the meeting ended, everyone left the room except Yogi Bapa and Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Yogi Bapa was so overjoyed, Pramukh Sai Maharaj often talks about it, okay, Yogi Bapa was so overjoyed at Swami Shri's firm stance in the meeting and he very lovingly blessed Pramukh Sai Maharaj by patting you know, his back with both his hands, Banne Hate Dabba Maria, as an expression of his, you know, how happy he was with Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Swami Shri had shouldered the entire responsibility of sourcing the water and he began preparing for the Motsa in Gondal. Now this was no easy task and amidst all the full fledged preparations for the Amrut Motso, Swami Shri's return still carried on. And you know, eventually he ended up uh, accompanying Yogi Ji Maharaj to Junagarh. Then Yogi Ji Maharaj, Swami Shri and Sant Swami, they were all welcomed with another grand procession uh, in, in Junagarh. And the procession, you know, they were, they were seated on a, on a cart which was drawn by 51 oxen at that time. So you can see this is a very traditional way of welcoming such senior sadhus. Swami Shri then eventually returned to Gondal after the Parayan. And he stayed there for the rest of the month as he continued with preparations for the Amrut Mahotsav. Now, a few prominent Hari Bhaktos wanted to invite the President of India, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan, to attend Yogi Ji Maharaj's Amrut Mahotsav. So, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Mahan Sai Maharaj, Rasik Bhai Secretary, Hakka Bhai Khachar, they all went to Delhi to extend an invitation to the President. They met uh, President Radhakrishnan in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. This was on the 8th of May. Uh, 1967 at around 4.45 p.m. Gulzalilal Nanda was also present at that time. Swami Shri extended an invitation to the President of India to attend the Amrut Mahotsav. And they also recall the meeting previously. If you remember that they had celebrated Shastaji Maharaj's uh, Utsav at that time as well. So two years before they had also visited the President to extend an invitation at that time as well. Now during, after the invitation they all returned back. During the entire journey, you know, you can imagine now, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Mahan Sai Maharaj, all very, very quiet. Harka Bapu often remembers this prasang and he says they were all very, very quiet at that time. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was shanti thi, mada firota firota, swaminan mantra bulta bulta, swami tiya, pacha, uh, paunchi gya, Gujarat taraf. Now, closer to the Amrut Mahotso, Swami Shi uh, wrote an invitation message to all the, all the Hari Bhaktos and he had written a message in the Swaminan Prakash. In that message, he highlighted the purpose of the celebration and he talked about Swami Shri's Mahima. Now, the article that Swami Shri wrote about, you can read it in the, in the text and we'll summarize it. Swami talked about how, for, he talked about Yogi Bapa's Mahima and he said how, for how six decades, despite facing so many hardships, Yogi Bapa had tirelessly traversed across Gujarat, encouraging morals, dharma, spiritual values in society and this is what Yogi Bapa's uh, purpose of doing Vichran was and as an expression of gratitude you know how so many disciples and santos had wished to celebrate his 76th birth anniversary again how Yogi Bapa was unwilling he mentioned how Yogi Bapa was so unwilling for these celebrations to take place yet very reluctantly he gave consent obviously caving into the love and the insistence of the Hari Bhakta so these are things that Swami mentions in this, uh, in this article and then he goes on to write that by honoring the spiritual values and reflecting on the divine qualities of such a Bhagwanna Akhandadara Sant, only then our wishes and prayers will yield favorable. Even Bhagwan would be pleased to see such devotion. So again, even Bhagwan would be so happy to see such a celebration. And then he goes on to say that the purpose of such events is to receive the blessings of such a great Sant, to free everyone from sorrow and the miseries of Kaal Karma and Maya. And then he Again, he ends his message with a welcome invitation for one and all. 
let's move on to I11. So after the uh, the Amrit Motsa was actually going to be celebrated in Gondal on a vast 35 acre plot in which almost 150,000 people were expected to participate. Now think about it, 1967, 150,000 people at that time. And Swami Shi also oversaw the entire festival and he guided so many departments at that time, the water department, the electricals, publications, building, the mandaps, the sabha, looking after the guests, accommodations, all these things all fell under Pramukh Sai Maharaj. His body clock was completely disrupted. You can imagine, you know, after taking, sometimes lunch would be around 4 p.m., dinner at 11. Swami was very, very, working very, very hard towards this. In fact, he often ended up sleeping around 2 a.m. So, so, light, so late in the night. Because sometimes they even had to pull all-nighters. You know, all-nighters, they would have to, all night they'd have to stay up just doing seva. In fact, on one occasion, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, you know, he checked the arrangements for the water, the accommodations in the nearby uh, Gam, in the village, in the houses. By the time Swami got back, it was 6 a.m. in the morning. Now, despite sleepless nights, he would still have to engage in seva with the same energy, the same vigor, the same zeal the following morning. You know, reminiscing on these sevas, Pramukh Sai Maharaj once narrated saying, However sleepless the nights were, I never experienced even a headache. In Gondal, I didn't even, I didn't even need to sleep sometimes. Just as I was about to sleep, I would get woken up. Just as I was about to eat, someone would call me and make me get up. All the responsibilities were in my head, but there was no problem. With Swami's grace, meaning with Yogi Bapa's grace, there was nothing like fatigue, nor sickness was ever experienced. Very nice, uh, comforting words from Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Let's move on to I-12. Swami Sri had uh, very proactively and tactfully worked hard to avoid any um, water shortages during the Amrut Mahotsav. You know, to source the water, they dug three boreholes. One was in the farm. The farm was directly behind. Uh, the, in, there's a cow shed in the Monday. So currently behind the cow shed, there was a farm. So that's where the first bore, bore hole was dug. The second one was in the Gurukur. And the third one in another vicinity on the campus. Now, despite all this, there was just no sign of water in any of them. And although these three bore holes were dug according to the guidance of experts at the groundwater level, all these attempts proved in vain. Swamishi wrote in his diary on the 19th of May. Now, it's interesting to see what Swami wrote in his diary. Pani mate akho divas menat lidi. Ashapura agar be engine muki, pani lava prayatna. Chata safarta na madi. Worked hard all day trying to source water. We placed two engines near Ashapura to pull the water. However, no success was forthcoming. Now, this is, you can see how difficult the times were. But despite this, Swamishi's faith, it, it just never wavered. You know, some people would mock Swami Sri and make fun of him and make, make comments. Okay, yo, you wanted to bring the celebrations to Gondal. I think it was a big mistake. But Swami Sri's aim was to fulfill Yogi Baba's wish and was very clear. And so he was not deterred even for a moment. It was Yogi Baba's wish to fill the Akshar Ghat. And now imagine, it was Yogi Baba's wish to, fulf to fill the Akshar Ghat, uh, which was on, again located uh, in the river Gondli. Why? just so that the Hari Bhaktos could uh, to take a bath in that and could use that as well. Now, water had to be brought through a pipeline from the Hathyo pond, which is about one and a half kilometers away. Now, for this laborious seva, Pramukh Sai Maharaj also joined in with the others in, such, in these menial tasks. You could see Pramukh Sai Maharaj, you know, many people would say that we saw Pramukh Sai Maharaj tightening the nuts and the bolts with pliers and spanners. And again, Swami was also getting his hands dirty just to accomplish uh, Swami Shi's wish. We will end today's session over here. Swaminarayan Bhagavanani Jai.